Manchester United, despite the last 10 years, are one of the biggest football teams in the world. But just up the road from Old Trafford is another club called Salford City and a couple of ex-Manchester United players have got stake and ownership in this team too. But they currently play in League 2 and they don't have the funds nor the player quality to even try and compete with Manchester United. But today, guys, we're going to change that. As today, I've been appointed Salford City's new manager with the goal to make them not only better than Manchester United, but to make them the best team in the world. So this is the team that we have inherited going into Season 1 with Salford City and this is easily going to be one of the trickiest videos I've done so far in FC24. The starters, they haven't exactly got a young squad. I mean, for God's sake, they've got Adrian Murray Yapa playing for them at the age of 36 and he's in the start in 11. And when you look at the highest rated players in the team overall, majority of them are in the 30s, so we've got our work cut out straight away to resolve that issue. And there's the contract situation where literally more than half the team have got less than a year left on their contract man this team is in absolute shambles but having said that there's a couple of bright spots like defensive midfielder Elliot Watt is 23 66 rated and he is the best player in this team by a country mile and there's also Luke Bolton who can play as a right midfielder right winger right wing back only 23 65 rated he's a very versatile player but let's be honest this Salford City team has got way more cons than it has pros so we've definitely got our work cut out if we want to make these guys the best team in the world but to be fair three million in our budget to begin our journey with a League 2 team, bear in mind, isn't exactly that bad, but if you've seen the title to this video, you know that that 3 million isn't exactly going to be that helpful. Because a couple of ex-Manchester United players have got stakes and ownership in this club, and we're just up the road from Old Trafford, I think it's fitting that we can only sign players from Manchester United themselves, and now you see why that 3 million isn't exactly going to be very helpful. I mean, Donny van der Beek, for example, doesn't even get game time at United, and he's worth 8 million. We can't even afford Manchester United scraps at the minute. So granted, whilst that 3 million is pretty solid for a League 2 side, it is absolutely nowhere near enough for what we need it for. So this time, I'm taking a different approach. I'm not going to meddle around with the team just yet, and I'm not going to change the formation either. And I'm also leaving the tactical vision alone. This is because I could change the formation, messing around with the team, go for a gig and pressing tactical vision, but until I know what I'm doing with the team, it is absolutely pointless messing around with it. But what I do know is we've got a pretty aging team, and some of these guys are in the start at 11 and we simply can't have that if we're going to build Salford City up to be the best team in the world. So I have put Adrian Mariape, Matty Lund and also Matt Smith on the transfer list as well as putting a load of Salford City players up for a loan deal. And now I know these guys aren't worth very much, 250k maximum, but that at least is a little bit more to our budget to help us bring in a couple of United players. And after successfully selling all three players I wanted to, we've now got 4 million in our budget. I mean, that's not exactly amazing, but it's better than three. Now it's just a case of looking through Manchester United's entire team and finding players that we can actually sign. Now I stumbled upon Shola Shortire, he's only 19, granted he's 62 overall but he's showing great potential and we definitely need that in this Salford City team and for only 700,000 because his contract was running out, he's our first sign in the Salford City manager. And I found yet another United player, Rhys Bennett, 19 years old, he's a centre back, 6 foot 2 and 61 overall and he's showing great potential just like Shola Shortire and for just half a million on the dot he is now the latest addition to the team and that actually still leaves us with two million so there's a chance we could bring in another united player but i have made a vital error i've completely forgotten about the contract situation before we go ahead and sign another united player we've got to sort this out first but thankfully we are in league two so the contracts don't exactly cost all that much we still have two million to spend and i reckon that's enough for one more manchester united signing now some of you might have been screaming at me to sign this guy but don't worry that's exactly what i'm going to try and do now. Kobe Mano, the 65 rated 18 year old who's versatile as hell in that midfield role. I'm going to do my absolute best to sign him. But the problem is according to Tan Hag, he's worth between 2.1 and 1.9 million. So we may not actually be able to afford him after all this. But we do have 2.3 million. So I'm going to go very very cheeky. 1.7 million as a starting bed. They only want 1.8 but that leaves us with half a million for his contract. We're not going to be able to afford him. What if we give them a player of our own. So I'm offering them Stevie Marlin alongside 1.6 million. I'm not too sure what they do with Stevie Marlin, but it's worth a shot, isn't it? They don't want Stevie Marlin, they want 1.8 million. We're going to go back to 1.7 and mess around with the salon clause. So I've dropped it to 1.6 instead of 1.7 and given them a 25% salon clause. I am praying to God this works. They want eight. Wait, what? How the hell do you work that one out? What are you on about? 
How are you going to ask me for 8.3 million when he's worth 1.9 million? Every time I go off, you rock a lad. Okay, let's drop it down to 1.75 million. Let's try to compromise, eh, Baldy? Okay, it seems like he's not happy with this. I do not know what happened there for him to try and suggest us buying him for 8 million. Something in this game is glitched. But there may be a way to sign Kobe Manu. We're in a pre-season tournament, and I'm pretty certain no matter how you do, that bolsters your budget a little bit. And I'm absolutely right, guys. We've got 3 million in our budget now. I'm telling you right now, guys, we are signing Kobe Manu. And finally, after about two and a half weeks of negotiation, with Tanag, we finally come to an agreement for 1.85 million to sign Kobe Mainu. He's rocking the number eight shit. I think he will be an absolutely incredible signing, but believe me, he's left us broke. I mean, we've got 19 pounds left in the budget for God's sake. It's a very good job I remembered about them contracts, ain't it? But now it's just a case of sorting this team out, getting it into a formation that works for the team, and also sorting out a tactical vision that works for the team as well. Now, starting with the formation, I'm going for the 4 2 3 1 narrow. Now, obviously, this is a personal favorite. Favorite of mine, but this formation proper suits the team now. I'm also rocking the gig and pressing tactical vision. We've got rid of all the goldie oldies in the team. We've got a relatively young squad now, and we're going to take full advantage of that. And after proper meddling with the Salford City squad, this is the starting 11 we're rocking going into season one with. Now, obviously, there's a lot of average players in this team at best at the minute, but that is what season one is about overall growth from the team and individual development as players. We're laying the foundations, guys, for success for season two or three seasons. Season one, I do not care how we do domestically or in the league. All I want is a lot of improvement from the entire team. And guys, that is exactly what's happened. Look at the improvement in some of these players, man. It is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, our striker junior Luwamba has got up to 62 overall. Our winger Kelly and Mai, who's only 20 years old, has grown eight ratings this year, man. That is absolutely phenomenal. And how could I forget? Shola Shorta has gone from 62 to 68 rating, man. It looks like our money spent on him was well worthy. Let me tell you something, guys. If we've done half as well in the league as this team's improved, we've definitely had a decent first season. And guys, it's been a very good first season. We've got promotion without even trying, man. We're going to be playing League One football next year. I mean, I sent a lot of players out on loan who were normally in the start in 11 to give all the players a chance to develop and grow as players, and we've still got promoted, man. That shows you how good this team actually is. We also made it to round three of the FA Cup, but we only made it to round one of the Carabao Cup. And we finished rock bottom of the Papa John's trophy so it looks like domestically not much has changed does it? And when you take a look at the stats guys, not all that impressive I mean we've only got 4 players who've got more than 10 goal contributions this season but somehow it was enough to get us automatically promoted to League 1 in our first attempt without even trying so you know what, I'll take that as a massive W. And the best thing is because we've been promoted we'll have a little bit more money to work with next year and hopefully that'll help us sign a couple more United players for all we know we could get back to back promotions. I'm telling you now though guys, season 1 with Salford City has been absolutely incredible but we've got a long way to go with them before we can call them the best team in the world. Our journey with this team has only just begun. So guys, it is now time for season 2 with Salford and I was right about the budget. We've got 8 million to spend and as a League 1 team, that is phenomenal. Now I can't believe I'm about to say this but looking at the team, there's only a couple of areas I actually do want to try and focus on more than others. The first one being the keeper role where Carnes plays because he's 64 rated, he's 31 years old. I'm just hoping that United have invested in a younger goalkeeper. The same goes for our fullback Shepard and Gob at both 29 and 31. They're not going to grow too much more and if we want to get to the championship at some point we're going to have to invest money in these positions. And finally our centre back Vassell he's 65 rated, he's 27 years old I can't see this guy growing too much more maybe 66, 67 at best but we definitely do need a better centre back in my opinion. And yes whilst 8 million is a vast improvement on last year's budget it's definitely nowhere near enough for what we need to do so we're still going to have to be quite tactical with which positions we buy for. But it's safe to say we can scratch off buying a goalkeeper this year because they've only got Altai, Bayundi and Andre Onana. I'm just hoping in the next couple of seasons they do actually invest in another goalkeeper that we can actually afford. But the good news is, looking at their defence, they've got a couple of centre-backs and a couple of full-backs that we could potentially afford to bring into the team. I mean, they've got Brandon Williams who's 23, 74 overall, would definitely help our chances of getting promoted to the championship.
championship this season to be fair, but he is pretty expensive. And there's also Wouter Ghost, who's early 20s, 69 overall, he's worth between 3 and 2.8 million, so we can definitely afford this guy, and to be fair, I think I might make him our first signing. And that's exactly what I've done, and he was very cheap as well, even with the contract negotiations, it only cost us the grand total of 2.7 million on the dot. But that only leaves us with 4 million pounds to spend, and if we want to bring in Brandon Williams, we're going to have to raise funds by selling a couple of players. But there is no way in hell I am selling any of our players that are very valuable to us. That is basically sacrificing one position for another. But players that I'm not using or got future plans for, I can definitely sell on like Stevie Marlin, like Odin Bailey, and also Osama Ashley. I know that these guys individually aren't worth all that much, but I'm hoping after selling these guys all together, they'll be enough to bring in Brandon Williams. And after successfully selling the players we put on the transfer list, we've now got 6 million in our budget, and thankfully that's more than enough to bring Brandon Williams to Salford City. And guys, it's official for four and a half million. Brandon Williams is now playing for Salford City, and that's our transfer window done for season two. And that means this is the starting 11 going into League One for the very first time. And who knows, after how we played last year, we may only be in this league for one season as well. But honestly, I'm not too fussed if we don't get promoted this year. All I want is the same thing I wanted last year overall growth and individual development as players. And just like last year, that's exactly what's happened. Look at the improvements in some of these players, man. We have got a seriously talented bunch at Salford City. I mean, just look at Junior Luamba, almost 70 rated at 22 years old. I'm pretty certain last year he started off in the 50s and now he's almost a 70 rated player. There's once again Shola Shortai, 74 rated now, another 6 improvement from him. But one player I'm really happy about, Kobe Main, who's 76 overall, he's only 20 years old as well. I'm pretty sure this guy had a good potential to begin with, but I feel like we're going to surpass that and then some. And you've got to admit, the team overall looks pretty damn decent. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how we've done in League One. But this time, we unfortunately can't celebrate a promotion. We finished ninth at the end of Season 2. We were 17 points outside the playoffs, so maybe next year we can compete for promotion. But this time, we made it to round 5 of the FA Cup, only losing to Arsenal on penalties. That is genuinely pretty damn good going. But Coventry knocked us out in round 1 of the Carabao Cup. Go bloody figure. But we've somehow won the Papa John's Trophy, beating Cambridge 2-1 on penalties. Boys, we have genuinely done the impossible with Salford City. We've won the Papa John's Trophy. Get in! But as for the stats, I've got to admit, they're not exactly that impressive. I mean, surely Shorter has been by a mile our best player. 19 goals, 4 assists and 56 games. But in only our second season in charge of Salford City, we are ninth in League 2. I thought at this point we'd just about be challenging for promotion to League 1, so I think we're doing pretty well. I'm just hoping the budget next year is the exact same as it was this season, because if that is the case, we've definitely got promotion in the bag for season three. But before we go any further, if you're enjoying the video so far, leave it a big old thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. We're currently on the road to 50,000 subscribers and we are so close to getting it. So it's now time for our third year in charge of Salford. And as you guys can see, we still remain in League One, but here's hoping after this season, we'll be playing championship football. Now looking at the team, guys, there's only two positions I want to really focus on, our goalkeeper and our right back position. They're both in the 30s now, they're both the weakest links in the team. And if we can afford to, we are definitely going to bring in a Manchester United player in for each of these positions. But that doesn't look like it's going to happen. We've got 5 million to spend in season three. That is a little bit of a kick in the teeth in comparison to last year's buddies. And once again, we aren't bringing in a keeper because they just refuse to bring in a third choice goalkeeper. United, you're absolutely killing me at this point. And the only fullback we may be able to afford to bring into the team is Alvaro Fernandez. I mean, he's 22, 75 overall. To be fair, he might be a better player for us than Brandon Williams. I mean, he's 24, he's 76 overall, he's worth six and a half million himself, so we may be able to get a player swap deal on the cards if we do want to bring in Alvaro Fernandez. I mean, obviously we need a goalkeeper and a right back, but I think swapping Brandon Williams for Alvaro Fernandez makes so much sense for the future of Salford City. Now, obviously we're offering Brandon Williams, but I'm offering them four million as well. Maybe this isn't off. They want 400 grand more, that is absolutely fine by me. Boys, we've got Alvaro Fernandez on a player swap deal. That's absolutely fantastic. And there he is, guys, in the Salford City shirt. Now, I know that we haven't exactly bolstered the team in any way, shape, or form, but I feel like this is definitely a transfer that'll pay off in the future. It's definitely rinsed our budget, though. We've got one million left to spend, so I think it's safe to say our transfer window is going to be cut short. And that means for season three, this is how the starting 11 looks. And hopefully, guys, this is our second and final season in League One. The beauty of this team is, I'd say a good nine out of the 11 players are still 
young, they're still growing, so hopefully by the end of the season, not only will we have got promotion, the team will once again have massively improved. Well guys, we may not have won League One, but we still got a shot of promotion. We are fifth in the league at the end of this season. We're in the playoffs alongside Blackpool, Rotherham United and Huddersfield. And we've just about got past Rotherham in the semis and we're playing Huddersfield in the playoff final. This game is for a chance to play in the championship next season. Are we going to take it? Yes, we do. Da Costa and Luamba, you absolutely beautiful people. 2-1 it ends and we are promoted to the championship. And honestly, guys, when you look at the team, I know that the ratings are a bit all over the place, but this is definitely a team good enough to compete in the championship. But as for the FA Cup, we only made it to round two. And we got knocked out straight away in the Carabao Cup by Mill. So domestically, we're back to square one. But this time, we only made the quarters of the Papa John's trophy before Gillingham knocked us out on penalties. But you know what? We've gone to the championship winning the Papa John's trophy. That's all I care about. As for the overall improvement, just take a look for yourselves, guys. Every single player has put a shift in, man. And what did I tell you guys about Alvaro Fernandez? He's gone from 75 to 82 rated in only a year, for God's sake. I was so right in swapping Brandon Williams for this guy. And stats wise, it's been our best season yet. 23 and 2 for Luamba, 14 and 11 for Shortire, 12 on the dot for Marcus Deckers, and 9 for Cali and Mai. But the good news for season 3 is we've got promotion via the playoffs, so hopefully our budget is massively improved from this season. And as you guys know, the team's massively improved over the course of this season, and if that budget is correct, I can genuinely see us getting back to back promotions. But we have now arrived in season 4, and the budget isn't what I wanted it to be. 9 million is all we've got, and whilst that is much better than last year, it's still nowhere near enough for what we need. Now the thing is, when you look at the team, for the most part, everywhere is actually pretty solid, but there's one position in particular I'm worried about now. And that is our goalkeeper role where Alex Collins plays. He's 67 rated at 33 years old, and it's not going to be long before he stops improving and starts going down in overall. But the thing is, as you can see, United simply refuse to bring in a third choice keeper, so I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands. Now there's a couple of players that I could sell that would definitely make us a butt, like Kobe Mayunu, Shaw, Tire Fernandez, but that simply isn't going to happen. But these players like Theo Vassell, Callum Hendry, and Callum Morton, who I just don't use anymore, and altogether they could make us a couple of million, so hopefully that is the case. And after officially selling all three of those players on the transfer list, we've now accumulated 13 million overall in our budget, and I'm praying to God that is enough to bring in a Manchester United goalkeeper. Now, obviously, we can't go for Onana, but we can go for Altar Bayondi, who's worth between 13 and 12.2 million, so we may just be able to make this happen. Now I'm going to start the bid off offering £10 million just to see what they say to that. They want £13.6 million. I tell you what, Tenag, you've been a pain in my backside from the start of this video. Will you cut me some slack? I've gone for half a million more. Let's see what he says to this. They want £12 million. Okay, they've already come down, so let's push our luck even further. Let's go for £11 million. I reckon he might say yes to this. 11.7. No, come on, Baldy. Come on. Be a little bit more reasonable. 11.25. Come on, for God's sake, it's Accept it. Finally, Eric Tan Hag, I swear to God, you are an absolute nuisance in this video. And there he is, guys. Altai Bayondi officially a place for Sulfur City. It's about damn time we managed to get ourselves a proper goalkeeper in it. And just look at the team going into our first season in the championship. I know that in a couple of areas of the team we're pretty weak, but I reckon we've got enough quality to get us promotion. I mean, we've now got a good goalkeeper. We've got Kaidi Mainu. We've got Shola Shortime. We've got a striker who's just never let us down. Don't get me wrong, I won't be fussed if we don't get promotion but I genuinely feel like there's a chance that we can and guys I was absolutely right we are fourth in the championship at the end of season four and we're in the playoffs alongside Norwich, Blackburn Rovers and Coventry City there's still a chance we get knocked out in the semis but the fact we've made the playoffs I'm absolutely buzzing with that alone but that isn't the case guys we've destroyed Blackburn Rovers in the semi-finals 3-1 on aggregate we're playing Coventry City in the final who annihilated Norwich 5-3 on aggregate themselves we're both coming into the final of very strong wins in the semis, but the question is, who is going to be the stronger on the day? And it's us. We've absolutely annihilated Coventry City 3-0 in the playoff final. We've once again won the playoffs to get promotion, but this time it's to get to the big one, the Premier League. I bloody knew there was a chance we could do it. I know we've got a couple of very weak players in the team, but like I said, we've got a couple of very strong players in the team as well that can definitely carry the load for the rest of them. As for the FA Cup, we did make it to round four, and we only made it to round two of the Carabao Cup, so it's back to square one there, isn't it? But once again, just look at some of the improvements in these players, man. I genuinely, at this point, cannot ask for a single thing more from them. They're over-delivering every single year. But something tells me as the seasons progress,
interest in the Premier League, we're going to have to sell you the Kobe Mainu or Shola Shortire in order to actually buy players from Man United, man. I don't want that to happen, but I can definitely see it happening. But as for our stats, Junior Luambe, 26 goals from 54 games. This guy from Season 1 has been an absolute menace in front of goal. But guys, it has finally happened. We've taken Salford City all the way from League 2 to the very top of English football to the Premier League. But I'm really hoping with promotion comes that promotion budget because there's definitely a lot of stuff we need to do in this team to make sure that we stay in the Premier League, especially if we can only buy players from Manchester United. But here we are, guys, in Season 5 with Salford, and it's official. We've got them all the way from League 2 to the Premier League. But whilst this team was good enough last year to get to the Premier League, definitely isn't good enough to stay here. We definitely need to try and make some improvements in this squad. Like bringing in a better fullback for Shepard and a better winger than De Costa. If we can sort those two positions out this season, I'll actually be quite content going into our first year in the Prem. Now, I've got to admit, I did expect more money, but we've got 46 million to spend in season five, and it's by a mile the most we've had so far, so I can't exactly complain. But looking through United's attackers, I've found Facundo Palestri. He's only 25, 79 overall, and his contract's running out, meaning we'll get him cheap as chips. And I've also spotted Brandon Williams, who still plays for United. He's 76 overall. All we'd have to do is convert him to a right back, and that's our defense pretty much sorted. But look at the other players they've got Anthony, Adam Hose, they've got Rashford, Jaden Sancho. We've got a long way to go before we're competing with United. But guys, we've got to take this one step at a time and re signing Brandon Williams and also signing for Kondo Palestri is a great step in the right direction to establish ourselves as a Premier League team. And for the combined total of 24.7 million, we've re signed Brandon Williams and also signed for Kondo Palestri, which concludes our transfer window for season five. And now the team looks like this heading into our first season in the Premier League with Salford City. And I've got to admit, now that we've got a better right winger and right back, I do fancy my chances of doing pretty well this year. Now, believe me, I'm a realist. I'm not expecting a top 10 finish, nor even a mid-table finish. I'm just expecting us to survive the Prem, and we've definitely got the quality in this team to pull that off. Now, to say I'm pleasantly surprised is an understatement. We are smack bang mid-table at the end of our first season in the Premier League. I can't lie, that is absolutely phenomenal. But Man United did end up winning the Premier League, so we've got a lot of catching up to do if we want to be better than them. And we also only made it to round four of the FA Cup. And we also got knocked out in round two of the Carabao Cup. It's hard to believe we haven't won the Carabao Cup in the FA Cup in this video, but we won the Papa John's Trophy in our second try. But guys, just check out the team at the end of season five. I reckon if next year we can fix a couple of positions, not only we gain a top 10 finish, we're gaining a European spot. I mean, just look at the improvement in some players. Kobe Main, who's now 90 rated. Shola Shorta is 89 rated now. And Alvaro Fernandez is 86 overall. I told you guys that player swap deal we did way back when would definitely benefit us in the future. And once again, our top goal scorer, Junior Luambe. 19 goal contributions and 41 games for his first season in the Prem. That ain't bad at all. But we all know the budget next year is going to drop a little bit, so that may lead us to selling either Kobe Mainu, Shola Shortire, Alvaro Fernandez, just to give us funds so that we can actually start competing with Manchester United. I mean, we did finish inside the top 10, so I really hope that doesn't happen, but if it does, we are going to have to make a pretty difficult choice. Now, I'm pleasantly surprised going into season six we've got 51 million to spend and that may just help us get european football this year now when you look at the starting 11 it's pretty obvious where we do need to improve it if possible another winger in place of cali and my would definitely go down in a treat i mean he's 24 73 rated he's been amazing for us since the beginning but now his potential stagnated and we just need someone better the same goes for reese bennett he's been incredible for us since season one but he's now only 74 overall and if we want to get european football we need a stronger center Back. But if we can't sort either of those positions out, a new right back in place of Williams wouldn't exactly be a bad thing. I know this guy's been in and out of this club like mad, but like I said, we're going for European football and we need someone better. But as for Luamba and Watt, I'm going to give him a couple of more seasons. I think they both keep improving and whilst that happens, I can't exactly move him away from the club, can I? And obviously I could sell Kobe Mainu for well over 200 million and sort the entire team out, but I want to hold off on that for just one more year. And this is because whilst United have got a serious amount to quality in the team they haven't got it where we specifically need it so i'm gonna hold off just one more season like i've just said but looking through united's team i found sent about leopold kewerfield he's only 24 79 overall he looks a pretty decent player and because his contract was running out we only had to spend 15 million to make him our first transfer of season six and that leaves us with 33 million to spend on another united player and i can't believe i'm about to say this but i think that puts us in a good position to actually be able to afford another one and i'm absolutely right i found all who's a 
a right wing back. He's 25, 81 overall. I mean, he's worth between 35 and 32 million, but I reckon we can pull this off. And I'm going to do this by giving them Brandon Williams once again in a swap deal alongside 25 million. At this point, I do feel kind of sorry for Brandon Williams, but you know what? It's business. It's not personal. And it looks like even though the cutscene's completely buggered up, they're happy with that deal to go through. And there he is, guys. He's traded one red colour for another and he's joined Salford City. And that is officially our defence completely sorted out now for the time being. And I can't lie, I am absolutely buzzing about that. And now the starting 11 looks like this and into our sixth year in charge of Salford City and if last season we got a top 10 finish surely to go we've got to be creeping inside that top 8 this season I mean we do still have weaklings like Imai and Watt in that midfield role but to be fair guys we've got so much quality around them I don't think it matters all that much but one thing's for certain now that we sorted out our entire defence season 6 is going to be very interesting and believe me I wasn't joking we are somehow in the Champions League next year after finishing 3rd in the league this season we're only 5 points from winning the entire damn thing and you know what's mad? Manchester United know where to... Oh my god, we legit finished six places above Manchester United. It looks like us taking away their plays is finally starting to harm them. But we can't yet say that we're better than them. We've officially got to win the Premier League title in order for that to happen. But this time in the FA Cup, we make it to the quarterfinals. Bloody Arsenal once again knocking us out. I swear that's like the third or fourth time alone in this video that they've knocked us out. And this time we made it to round four of the Carabao Cup before Cardiff knocked us out on penalties. Surely we got to be beating Cardiff. And just look at the team, man. It's coming on leaps and bounds every single year. All sorting that defence out really helped us out in the end, didn't he? And once again, Luamba is our top goal scorer. 20 goals in two assists and 44 games. Even though he's one of the lowest rated players in the entire starting 11, he's performing one of the best in front of goal. But now that we've finished third and qualified for the Champions League next year, you know what that means. Our budget surely now has got to be getting doubled at this point. Which may mean that after all of that, we may end up avoiding Sally Cobb be Mainu after all. But with us playing Champions League football next year, it's going to be quite intriguing to see how we get on in it, considering how well we've done in the Premier League this time. Well, it is now season seven and we're starting off very well with 112 million in our budget by a mile, the highest budget we've received so far, and we're definitely going to put it to good use. Now, looking at the starting 11, when you compare overalls, these three positions that are really lacking in comparison to others. And the first one is our striker, Luambi, 79 overall, but every single year, He's been one of our top goal scorers, so for now at least, he's keeping his role in the team. And that means that our winger in my and our defensive midfielder Watt, who's been with us since the start, are biting the bullet and they're going to get replaced this season. I know that may be an unpopular decision, especially me replacing Watt after so many years, but with us being in the Champions League now, we need somebody better to partner up with Kobe Mainu. But let's be honest, guys, we've got 112 million in our budget, and sorting those two positions out will definitely help our chances to do better in Europe this year. And after searching through United's team, I found Quinton Timber for that midfield role. He's 28 years old, 84 overall, and whether we like to admit it or not, he will be a massive improvement on Watt. And as for that winger role, I found one Jaden Sancho, who for some reason is still playing for United, but he's 29, 85 rated, and he will definitely be a massive improvement for our front four. Now, I'm not saying these signings are going to help us win the Champions League, but I definitely feel like not only will it help us do better in the Champions League, but it may edge us to a Premier League title this season. And for the combined total of £86.1 million, pounds, we have signed both Jaden Sancho and Quinton Timber to Salford City, and that's our transfer window done for Season 7. And that leaves the team looking like this, going into our seventh year in charge of Salford City, in our very first season competing in the Champions League. Now, I know that keeping Luamba in the team may not be the wisest decision I made, but I want to see how he does in the Champions League. He's been phenomenal for us so far. I've got to pay him back in some way. Now, as I've said, we are in the Champions League. We're in Group B alongside Inter Milan, Real Betis and Siltborg IF. And if I'm being honest, that is a pretty competitive group, but this team has surely got to at least make it out the group stage. I'm not expecting us to win it, but I definitely want to make it to at least the round of 16. But as for the Premier League, guys, we've smashed it. We've won the Premier League title, making us the best team in England. We did it by six points as well. But not only have we made it official that we're the best team in England, with Manchester United finishing seventh and us winning the league, we are now officially better than Manchester 
Manchester United themselves. But we won the best team in the FA Cup as this time we crash out in round 6 against the other side of Manchester. And somehow Sheffield United get the better of us in round 3 of the Carabao Cup, yet we somehow won the Premier League by 6 points. Someone tell me how that makes sense. But as for the Champions League, we did make it through to the knockouts after finishing 2nd in Group B, 5 points behind Inter Milan. Fair play to them. But it's in the round of 16 where our junior comes to an end, just missing out to PSG on aggregate. 4-3, man. We were so close to knocking them out. But you've got to admit, guys, this team is looking pretty damn spectacular at the minute, and it pushed PSG to the absolute limit. And in Season 7 of this video, the development of some individuals is spectacular. Palistri, 87 rated. Fernandez, 89 rated. 93 overall short tyre. And 96 rated Kobe Mainu, man. Honestly, if we get him to 99 overall, I would be over the moon. And as for the stats, well, Junior Luamba has got 30 goals and 6 assists in 50 games. He is making it so difficult to replace him. Even though he's the lowest rated player on the team, he's been by a mile our best performing player. It's safe to say Season 7 has been our best yet. Round of 16 in the Champions League, quarterfinals of the FA Cup, and officially winning the Premier League, making us the best team in England, and more importantly, the better team than Manchester United. All we got to do now is win the Champions League with Salford City, making them the best team in the world, and my job as their manager is done. So it's now our eighth season in charge of Salford City, and as you guys can see, I've been very hot on with the coaches, but the difference is the ideal amount of stars that we need is a lot lower than usual, and I'm thinking that's the main reason why we've seen so much growth. I mean, for God's sake, Kobe Mainu is literally 96 overall, and he's nowhere near 30 years old yet. That growth is actually ridiculous. But looking at the starting 11, guys, if we really want to try and do better in the Champions League this year, we've got to make a couple of signings, and you guys aren't going to like what I'm about to say. Now, the first signing will be a better keeper than Altar Bayondi, who's 32 years old, 83 rated. Now, granted, he's a pretty decent keeper, but I feel like if United have got a better one, we've simply got to go for them. And this is the one you're not going to like, and to be honest, I don't like it either. I'm going for a better striker than Junior Luamba. He's 27, 81 rated. He's been Mr. Reliable from the start up until this point, but the Champions League may be a little bit too much for him. And bloody hell, we've got the money to make change this time. 153 million to be exact. Let me tell you, if they've got a goalkeeper and striker at United, we're snapping them up just like that. And it looks like the first player I'm snapping up is Unai Simon. He's 6 foot 3, 33 years old, 86 overall, so he's much better than Bayondia, and for 24.8 million, he's officially our first signing of season 8. And we still have over 120 million to spend, so unless they've got Mbappe and Holland as their only strikers, I'd say we're alright. But they've definitely got a good striker. Adam Hlozek is their main man up top. He's 28, 85 rated, and I did say he was their main man up top, but believe me, that's not going to be the case for much longer. As for only 40 million on the dot, we'll sign Adam Lozek on a four-year deal, and in my opinion, that's the bargain of the century. And just look at the team now. There is absolutely no weakness in that starting 11. This is absolutely fantastic. But we do have 75 million left to spend on Manchester United players, and I think we can work on the bench just a little bit before we move into season eight. And to be fair, we only need a fullback and a central attacking midfielder, and I reckon this team is good to go. Now, they do have an attacking midfielder by the name of Christoph Baumgartner, who's 30 years old, 84 overall, can definitely do a job if short tire ends up suspended or injured. And United also have Angelino playing for them too. He's 80 overall, granted he's 33 years old, but I reckon he'll do a job as a second choice fullback. And for the grand total of £54.8 million, we have signed both Angelino and Christoph Baumgartner, and that's our transfer window wrapped up for season eight. And guys, the team in front of you right now is the team heading into our eighth season with Salford City. And not only do I think we're going to win the Premier League once again, I think the Champions League is literally ours to lose. The bench is finally looking pretty decent. The start 11 looks pretty damn good as well. There's no reason this season why we can't win the treble or even the quadruple for that matter. Now, we are in Group F in the Champions League alongside Leverkusen, Lille and Young Boys, and I'm hoping Leverkusen don't play like they are in real life, because if that's the case, we're in for a rough group stage. But like I've already said, the team we've got right now, that Champions League is ours to lose, man. I'm just praying to God that this year we can absolutely take it by storm. Well, this year's off to a good start. We've gone back-to-back -back winning the Premier League, this time by 94 points, man. Only drawing four games and losing four games out of 38 all season. That is pretty damn impressive. We've also won the Community Shield, so that's two trophies straight away. And we finally won the FA Cup, battering Liverpool to do it in the process. That's our third trophy already in Season 8. But Liverpool actually knocked us out in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, so I suppose they got their revenge on us there, didn't they? But so far, we've won the FA Cup, 
the Community Shield and the Premier League title. So if we do well in the Champions League, we're on for the quadruple. And it's a good start, guys. We are in the knockouts once again after finishing second in Group F, only one point behind Leverkusen. But this time, we absolutely annihilate Bayern Munich in the round of 16. And we do the exact same to Juve in the quarters. We could be playing PSG, RB Leipzig, or even Liverpool. Oh, please be Liverpool and let us absolutely smash them. It was in Liverpool, but we've beaten RB Leipzig 5-2 in the semi-finals and we're playing a PSG team in the final who have absolutely smoked Liverpool 5-1. And it's just dawned on me, we've got a chance to revenge here. Last season, they knocked us out in the round of 16 and we could beat them now to win this entire damn thing. And before we go any further, I want to point this out. Kobe Mainu is 98 rated. I don't think I've ever had a player that high before in a rebuild, man. I am so happy we bought him at the very start. And I'm also happy we bought Shola Shortire. 59 goal contributions in 61 games. I swear to God, I don't even think it cost us 2 million back in the day when we bought him. And he's producing numbers like that now. And this is the starting 11 going into the Champions League final against PSG. And I'm just going to put this out there. I feel sorry for PSG because we have got by a mile the better team than them. I mean, we've got 90 rated Palestri, 95 rated Shortire, 98 rated Mainu, and also 91 rated Fernandez. I don't think PSG are going to know what's hit them. But so far in this video, we've won quite a bit. We've won two playoff finals, two Premier League titles, the FA Cup and the Community Shield. But now we have the opportunity to win Salford City, their first ever European competition. All we got to do is beat Paris Saint-Germain to do it. PSG are coming forward with Alejandro Garnacho. Alfonso Davis is on the left-hand side now. He's passed it back to Garnacho. I wonder if he's actually won a Ballon d'Or in this career mode save. Pushing forward on the right-hand side of the pitch. Now Timber, can we see that run? Why did you pass it directly to him, man? I wanted that on the wing, not directly to him. Here comes Kylian Mbappe. He's passed it through. Oh, my days. What is the keeper doing there? Garnacho legit sent him for a frigging slide there. I mean, it's a great ball through for Mbappe. I don't know what is going on with our defence, but what is that keeping there, man? I could do better than that and I'm fat. We've been on the back foot since minute one. We need to wake up, smell the coffee and get into this game. But we might have an opportunity to do that now with Jaden Sancho. Can he bore us? What? Oh my days, Jaden. That's why you've gone back to Dortmund. We've got Fernandez on the ball. I'm waiting for that run from Sancho. He's found the run. Okay, can we cut inside? This is beautiful if we can make this work. Lozak, okay, through. You're through. Make this one all, please. <laughs> Nah, there's no way. Why can't my players finish their dinner? Shola Shortai has scored 42 goals this season, and our striker can't even put that away. No wonder he wasn't the top goal scorer of the bloody fled. Turum's on the ball now. He's on the left-hand side of the pitch. Arthur's close by him, but he's just been done like that. Mbappe's there now, yeah. and oh my god. Okay, that's our lucky break. One more chance like that, that's going in. We've got Facundo Palestri on the ball. He's going to cut inside. That's beautiful. Okay, we've got a chance here. Please make it one all. Thank god for that. And thank God for Facundo Palestri. What a goal. He's on his weak foot and he slots that straight past Donnarumma like he's not even there, man. Great goal. And that's us back in the game. We can ill afford another silly goal conceded, especially against a team like PSG, but it looks like that's about to happen. What are we playing at, for God's sake? We legit only just got back into the game. We bloody conceded again. This defending is absolutely terrible, man. What are we playing at here? And who's covering two of them there? For God's sake, stupid defending. But we've got Palestri on the ball once again. We're going to cut inside once again. Okay, this is decent. This is decent. No way. Surely to God, this is it. Palestri is untouchable. Palestri is an absolute god in this game. I don't know why no defenders came to try and tackle me. We're on legendary difficulty. That shouldn't be happening, but I'm definitely taking it. Here comes Palestri once again. He's all the way on the right-hand side, boys. This could be the hat trick. A hat trick in the Champions League final and a hat trick to possibly, potentially win us the Champions League. He picks the ball up. I assumed that there was somebody with him, but he was wide open. And for the third time in this game, he has got the better of Donnarumma, man. What a player. But PSG aren't down and out just yet. They're coming forward with a vengeance. Look at this. Fernandez is on the ball. He's on the right hand side. He's found Brahim. Okay, Benasol's on the ball. Oh, no, this isn't good at all. Mbappe, great save. What a save from Unai Simon. This is potentially one of the last kicks of the game and one of the last chances PSG have got to come back into this game, but it's safely collected into Unai Simon's hands. And that's the full-time whistle. Oh, my God, Facundo Palistri has solo carried us to the Champions League trophy, man. What a player and what a performance. A hat-trick in the Champions League final. That's fantastic. But that is the Champions League one in 
added to the cabinet. Not only have we made them better than Manchester United, not only have we made Salford City the best team in England, we have officially made them the best team in the world. And to be fair, guys, it only took eight seasons only buying players from Manchester United. I highly recommend this challenge to you lot. But that is where this video comes to an end. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, you should click right here to watch me do this with 1860 Munich.